down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I know you're all anxious to hear the old fellows, but first, one minute, please. What I'm going to say is not new to a lot of you, but it's mighty important to others. To those listeners, I mean, who are still suffering sleepless, restless nights because they've not yet become acquainted with Horlicks. To these listeners, I have only one thing to say. Tonight, just before you go to bed, drink a glass full of Horlicks hot. And I know you'll find it a great help in getting to sleep. Once asleep, you'll sleep much sounder, too. Be more refreshed next morning. And there's a reason for that, a scientific reason. A nourishing, easy-to-digest drink like Horlicks, taken just before retiring, has been shown to reduce restlessness, to soothe and relax you, enabling you to get maximum rest from your hours of sleep. Just try it. Try Horlicks tonight, and then keep a package on hand. It's easily, quickly prepared at home, and can be obtained in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum's only chance for acquittal on the charges of violating the Blue Sky Law is to produce Quire Skim, the promoter of the fake silver mine, before the case comes to trial. But yesterday, they learned that the missing Squire is now in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Lum is planning a trip to Tulsa to bring him back for a trial. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house making preparations for the trip. Listen. Uh, this uh, valise here is about full, Lum. I, I can't get these house slippers in here. Well, I never meant to take them anyway. What all have you got in there, for goodness sake? Well, I just uh, put stuff in here that I thought you'd need. Let me see. Oh, goodness, you've got enough clothes in there to run me six months. Yeah, but now you can't tell how long it'll take to locate Squire after you get over there, though, Lum. Well, I can't be gone long. My trial comes up next, next week sometime. If I can't find him for it, then it won't do no good no way. Yeah, that's right, yeah. What in the world is this you've got in yeah, Wait a minute, uh, lean over again, Mom. What for? <laughs> I don't know, you sure smell good. Oh, yeah, that's that hair tonic Smoke's Moose put on me down at the barbershop while ago. Oh, yeah. Violet flavor, I believe he called it. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure it's strong enough. I've been smelling it ever since you come in the room. Didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, you gave me a good dash with it, all right. Sort of made my eyes burn. Yeah, uh, that just reminds me, too, Lum. You, you know, I told you how that vanilla extract's been a disappearing down to store. Yeah. Have you been missing some more? Yeah, but I found out where it's been going to. Cedric's been getting in it. Cedric? Yes, sir. He's using it for perfume. <laughs> Goodness. Vanilla extract for perfumery? Yes, sir. Every time we get on that store, I get hungry. Smells like somebody baking a cake in there. <laughs> Swan, too, goodness. <laughs> that boy is a sight. No telling how much of that stuff he's used. Just pour it all over himself. Got the whole store to smelling like vanilla. We ought to just stop handling that vanilla flavor. Now, you better speak to him before he starts in on the banana or lemon or some of them other flavors. We can't just quit handling extracts just on account of him. Well, I'm a charging him with it. Every time I get a big whiff of vanilla, well, I just go charge up another bottle to him. Now, how is he coming on the books, anyway? I've been so busy with his trouble of mine, I ain't had time to check up on him here lately. No. Well, I run it up the other day, and according to my account, he owes us about $4 more than he's got coming. $4 more than he's got coming? Yes, sir. Well, you better tell him if he don't stop that, we're going to fire him. Well, we can farm, Lom. We never would collect it. Yeah, but if he's going further in debt every week, he'd pay us to farm now before he gets in debt any further. Here, one of these night shirts is enough. What's this down in here? Huh? Oh, oh, that's your overcoat. Overcoat? Yeah. Well, no wonder this valise is so full. Take that thing out. I don't need no big heavy coat this time of year. Well, uh, th th that's a uh, part of your disguise, old Lom. You've got to take that. Disguise? Yeah. <laughs> I bet you'll be the only feller on the streets over there with a big overcoat on. Well, of course I would. This time of year, folks are thinking I'd lost my mind going down the street with a big overcoat on. Well, uh, that's just it, Mom. See, you pull that coat collar up around your ears and then your hat down over your eyes and put them whiskers on, wouldn't nobody know you. What whiskers? Oh, oh, <laughs> I forgot to show you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute there. Down in here somewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah, here they are. Look out. What is that thing? Here. I'd have to be a whisker. Slip them on and see how you like them. For goodness sakes, I wouldn't put them things on my face for nothing. Where in the world you get them things, anyway? Well, I made them myself. That's, that's made out of the padding out of that old settee you over at the place. For goodness sakes. What in the world would I want to dress up in an outfit like that over there in Tulsi for her? Why, so you can disguise yourself to where you can slip up on squire skin. I thought about getting you an Indian get up. But the uh, trouble is, there's so many Indians over in Oklahoma that nobody wouldn't pay no attention to you in one of them. Abner, I don't need no disguise. I ain't trying to hide from Squire. I'm trying to catch him. If anybody ought to be wearing a disguise, it's him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, take it over and give it to him, man. I ain't got no use for it. Well, if I ever got close enough to him to give him something, I'd just take him on back home. Just take that stuff out of there. I don't need it. Well... All right, but looks to me like you're passing up a mighty good chance to wear a disguise on. I know this will work, for I tried it out on Elizabeth this morning. Fooled her with it, all right. <laughs> I had to chop up over two ricks of wood to do it, though. Had to chop up two ricks of wood? Yeah, I see. I told her that I was a tramp and, and wanted a cup of coffee. <laughs> Went up to the back door and knocked. <laughs> and she said that and she believed I was Abner, so... I had to chop up all that wood to prove it to her I was a tramp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth just about seen a chance to get some work out of you. More than like I knowed who you was all the time. Well, I'll be dead thank Reckon she did sure enough. Well, hey, sure, I can see through that. She just tricked you into chopping up two rick of wood for her. I know that I wish I knowed for sure about that. I'd march right over there and just... No, uh... I reckon ain't much I could do it done chopping. <laughs> it's a good one when you go over doing a woman's work. <laughs> She'll have you milking the cows the first thing you know. Yeah, I'm just glad I had on that disguise so nobody else couldn't tell who it was. I never would hear the last of it. They'd josh a life out of me down around a barber shop there if they'd catch me a chopping wood. Yeah, you won't catch me wearing nothing like that. Oh, well, I, I don't think Squire would try to get you to chop no wood, Lon. No, but the whole thing's a silly, am I right? Wait a minute. What's, uh, what's this in this sack? It's it's warm. Ain't nothing alive in there. Oh, <laughs> I reckon them taters are still hot. Potatoes? Yeah, them sweet potatoes. That's going to be a surprise, Lon. Uh, that's a uh, uh, lunch that Elizabeth fixed up for you to eat on a train. <laughs> well, I do know. Now, ain't that nice? She hadn't ought to went to all that bother with herself, though. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right now. You don't get there till tomorrow night, why, well, that little snack will come in mighty handy long. You'll get awful hungry in that length of time. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing I seen it before I closed up the valise. I wouldn't know to had it till I got cleaned the Tulsi. Why, sure. <laughs> What's the matter with me, anyway? <laughs> well, tell Elizabeth thank you. I weren't aiming on taking no lunch. Just sort of figured I'd have to buy sandwiches or something from that fellow runs a little store there in a the smoke car. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I do love to buy stuff from him. <laughs> I recollect when I used to little fellow always wanted to buy one of them little engines with them little colored candies. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and little lanterns. Yeah, low I saw them. And yeah, Pearl, she always wanted one. Finally, I bought one for her. She's got it sitting on a mantelpiece over at the place now. <laughs> but them is awful nice fellas to trade with. They're oh. always so friendly, it looks like. Yeah. What is this, fried chicken she got down in here? I don't know. I never seen her put it up. I just... Look at her. Two big pieces of cake. I well, <laughs> yeah, I know it's chocolate layers cake, ain't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Mom, don't reckon that stuff would spoil before you get a chance to eat it, do you? I don't know. I just think about the same thing myself, haven't I? My granny there's a drumstick, my favorite piece of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I ought to eat some of this stuff to sort of save it, reckon? Yeah, of course, uh, you don't want to eat too much now and make yourself sick, Lon. It, it's locked out, you know, you don't want to do that just to save it. Uh, I could, uh, I could, uh, eat that, that wing after you. Oh, that's all right, am I? Be able to eat it all, I think, all right, thanks. <laughs> Looks awful good, don't it? Yeah, it is good. Yeah, that's as good as chicken as I ever had. What are you looking for? Oh, I just uh, looking down in here, see what all she had here for you. Well, here's some uh, hard-boiled eggs, Lon. Yeah, good. Pass one of them up here. See any bread down in there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's some biscuits. Yeah, <laughs> here, here. Cold biscuits and cold fried chicken. Granny, that's something I do love. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, you ain't gonna be able to eat all that hay you know, by yourself anyway. Well, I don't know. But I, I don't believe you are. Well, <laughs> there's a second joint. Now that's my favorite piece of chicken. Yeah, hand me that. I'll work on it a while. Yeah, I wish I was going summer. But do you like the wing long? Yeah, probably well. You asked me about that a while ago, I think. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you like nearly all the pieces, don't you? Uh, if I was you, Lama, I wouldn't try to eat both them pieces of cake, oh, I don't believe. Well, what's the matter with them? Well, it's just awful rich, you know. Too much of it that way might make yourself sick. Yeah, that's right. Of course, I could save one piece of it till I get on the train, I reckon. Well, the trouble is, oh, it dries out so bad, Lama. I just sort of thinking maybe <laughs> I could eat Wait, wait a minute. There comes Dick Cutterson up the front porch there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well. All right, him there. Tell him to come on in. Well, Howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, come in. Well, howdy, howdy. Yeah, pretty good. Come right in, Dick. Just get my duds packed here. Yeah, I see. Looks like you're doing a pretty good job packing that food away, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a lunch Elizabeth fixed up for me to take on the train. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I want to talk to you about, Lum. I, I don't believe you better go to Tulsa. Better not go to Tulsa. No, Grandpappy Spears and Uncle Henry Lunsford and some of the others here in town are... A little uneasy about you leaving town. Oh, well, shuckins, I've read on trains before. Ain't no danger. Well, I don't think they're uneasy about that, Lum, but, uh, well, just to be honest with you, it's the ones that signed your bond to get you out of jail. They're a little afraid to let you leave town, afraid something might happen to where you wouldn't get back in time for your trial, then they'd have to pay off the bond. They just don't want to take those chances. Well, I'll be dead brain. Ain't you going, Lum? I guess I can if they don't want me to. Well, go. Abner, put that chicken down. Come back here at that line. Well, now, if you ain't going on a train, you don't need no lunch. Ain't no use just let this stuff go away. <laughs> well, Lum still has to figure out some way to get Square back in time for that trial. Prevention is better than cure, says the wise old proverb. Perhaps you don't believe in sayings, but apply that one to the common cold, and you'll see how true it really is. Every winter, colds cause plenty of distress and often serious illness. Prevention would be worth millions of dollars to civilization. Science has tried, of course, tried for years, but still there's no definite solution. One thing science did discover, however, is that diet is an important factor in cold prevention. If you include plenty of Horlicks in your diet this winter, this strengthening, energy-giving drink will do much to build up your resistance to sickness. And that's because it's rich in vitamins and in bodybuilding minerals. Give Horlicks to your youngsters and to the whole family. They'll never tire of Horlicks' full, delicious flavor. You can get it from your dealer in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time. <laughs>